of grim images of death across the skies of Europe, Africa, and the Americas. The sight of the circling vultures is a signal to the others that fresh meat awaits below. Unlike many carnivores, vultures do not dine alone. So it's not until enough have joined in that the communal gathering attacks the carcass, tearing it apart into little remains. In the wild, this role as nature's cleanup crew is as critical as the first line of defense against disease. Only now, their ill reputation for being the harbingers of death has also led to their own decline. So how can one zoo create a safe environment for these giant birds without any man-made barriers and allow them to continue their natural behaviors in the hopes of repopulating in the wild? The answer is found in France's extraordinary Zoo Douai La Fontaine, where an ancient quarry provides the natural backdrop for a vulture exhibit unlike any in the world, a place called the Cavern of Scavengers. Cavern of Scavengers is a massive 32,000 square foot open air habitat that is home to a community of 21 vultures representing three different species the griffin vulture, the Egyptian vulture, and the black vulture. It's the only place in the world where you can see these three endangered vulture species together in a natural setting. Only this landscape wasn't created by any mastery of modern exhibit design. Rather, it's one of the vestiges of a quarry mine, and it supplied specific minerals to fertilize the Loire Valley's famous vineyards. Then, in 1961, the abandoned mine, by then an eclectic mix of overgrown catacombs and grottos, was bought by a family with the unique idea of turning the expansive labyrinth site into a zoo. Now, three decades later, the famous zoo, as well as the family legacy, was being led by animal lover Pierre Gay. Pierre had expanded the zoo's quarries to include 62 species, from leopards to tropical birds. Then, he repurposed the catacombs for everything from passageways between exhibits to zoo facilities. But despite all his work to provide the animals with a natural zoo environment, one of his favorite animals was missing. Vultures. With their numbers down in the wild and the perfect setting to replicate their mountain cliffs habitat, Pierre knew that this was one animal that could truly benefit from Zoo Douai's unique landscape. It's a very natural landscape and we use mostly these cliffs of the quarries to build our enclosures for big cats and birds, like the vultures enclosure. Pierre's goal was to provide an environment where the species could breed with the hopes of releasing offspring into the wild. But to do that, Pierre knew that he would first need to foster the bird's natural existence as best as possible. His first order was creating the 32,000 square foot habitat. This meadow complete with old growth trees provided an optimal landscape for the different species of birds to spread out and live in their own communities. Then, along the towering 36-foot-tall sheer wall, Pierre's team carved the limestone to create small alcoves where the birds could nest and hopefully breed. The only thing that was missing from this tailor-made vulture habitat was the most common feature in bird exhibitry, an overhead net. Only here, in order to keep things natural, Pierre knew he had to take a chance. You can see there is no net. Uh, it's not closed at all, they can they live totally free, and that makes ours really very different. Vultures need a lot of room to take off. And while the 32,000 square foot habitat is gigantic by any exhibit standards, the combination of the sheer walls and a landscape dense with trees would make it virtually impossible for the big birds to gain enough altitude to rise up above the quarry wall. With a habitat established, next came the birds themselves. Unlike many carnivores, vultures of one species will often coexist with others. 
also here, with virtually no space limitations, Pierre combined a diversity of black vultures, griffins, and Egyptians, each in big enough numbers to reflect their communities in the wild. Only creating such a wild environment would also soon come with its share of natural problems. Zoo veterinarian Bryce LaFoe monitors the general health and breeding status of the vultures in the exhibit. One day, he made a frightening discovery when one of his favorite vultures, a black named Boo Boo, revealed a severe infection in his wing. In the wild, he would have died, but here Bryce was able to save his life. Only to do so, he had to amputate one of his wings. My friend, he had last, last year a very, very hard problem with the, with the wing, infection into, uh, into the bone. And we all decided with the keepers and, and I to make the operation and to we'll see what happened after. Months later, Boo Boo was still slow to recover. And now Bryce knows he must re-examine the wound, a procedure that starts with the most difficult task of all, getting Boo Boo to the hospital. Even with only one wing, Boo Boo was a 26-pound wild animal with razor-sharp claws designed for ripping flesh from the bone. So Bryce would have to be extremely careful as he approaches the bird with his net. Finally, he gets a grip and hikes out of the exhibit to the transport cage. Once in the hospital, Bryce sues his friend as he's anesthetized for his exam. So now we're going to check the, the amputation. As you see, there is some male. After cleaning and examining the wound, Bryce is relieved to give Boo Boo a clean bill of health and takes him back to the habitat. Besides not being able to fly, it's also not likely that Boo Boo will ever be able to breathe. His life, though, will remain full, especially since he'll still be able to resume his single most characteristic behavior, tearing apart fresh meat. Next, the visitors take their seats as fresh meat is thrown into the vulture's den. 